So for quite some time now I've been really interested in spiral arm antennas especially forearm spiral antennas and uh, this interest uh, actually started when I was at university about uh, 15 years ago now and uh, it's kind of grown from there and I've kind of hit a brick wall with uh, spiral antennas now I have got several books on the subject but unfortunately I'm making prototypes and the equipment that I've got here in the lab is uh, too old and it's I'm not able to test them properly but uh, one thing that has come out of my uh, obsession with uh, spiral antennas is the spiral cone helical antenna now I've got uh, just a small fraction of the prototypes that I've been making over the last few weeks here and uh, this is actually a really interesting antenna and uh, it has uh, some benefits over a more traditional helical antenna the uh, cone in the uh, antenna itself makes this antenna a really wide band antenna now over the last uh, couple of months I've had quite a few emails of people asking me about these dual band antennas. Now dual band antennas do have their place, they, they, they work really well on routers especially if it's uh, you know a 2.4 GHz router and a 5 GHz router and uh, you know, your house isn't that big so really distance isn't an issue because basically a dual band antenna is you know okay at uh, 2.4 and okay at 5 gigahertz it's never really good in either of those frequencies that it's supposed to work over but a wideband antenna is different a wideband antenna works over a much greater frequency range and especially the uh, previous antenna that I've done are the uh, log periodic antenna that is also a wideband antenna that antenna that I made in that video will probably work just as well at uh, 1.5 gigahertz up to possibly 6 gigahertz no problem at all but um, this cone antenna is also a wideband antenna so we can actually take the properties from that and use it for you know Wi-Fi at 2.4 gigahertz and also use it on your FPV setup at 5.8 gigahertz now when it comes to the spiral cone antenna there are many many designs and there are so many dissertations wrote on this subject alone more than any other antenna and uh, differences come from you know the spacing of each one of the coils that can have it tighter at the top here and then uh, tapering down and having it much wider at the base so there's many many different designs so this is the uh, helical cone antenna that I've come up with from making all those prototypes and uh, this one is actually tuned for uh, 2.4 gigahertz but as I said it's so wideband this will also work quite happily at uh, 5.8 gigahertz no problem at all so if you're looking for a dual band antenna then uh, I wouldn't actually go down the route of a dual band antenna I would look at something like this which is uh, wideband and uh, yes normally wideband antennas are directional I can't think of any uh, omnidirectional wideband antennas off the top of my head I'm sure they do exist but uh, in this video I'm going to show you how I actually come up with this and uh, actually made this now it is quite a simple design the wire that I've used is actually two millimeter thick garden fence wire and I've got a uh, circle PCB here for the reflector and I've actually got the uh, housing of a pen running through the middle there and it's all fastened off at the end with some uh, epoxy putty so it's really simple to make so uh, I'm going to show you the steps that uh, you need to take to actually make one of these now to help you make this antenna you're going to need to get your hands on some of these cream horn molds now I'll put a link in the description to uh, a seller on eBay that sells these they're pretty cheap I think I got uh, six of these for around five pounds but uh, what's really good about these is they are stainless steel but they're not actually fastened down the seam at the side here so you can 
pinch the diameter in or you can pull it apart slightly now I am going to order some Jubilee clips with a little uh, thumb screw tightener on the side here so I can actually put a Jubilee clip round here and then I can reduce it down to the uh, circumference that I actually want for the particular antenna that I'm actually making so these are really really good and uh, quite cheap so what I've done here then I've got some masking tape down the side and I've marked off little 15 millimeter marks and that's going to help me when I'm coiling my wire around to try and get it uh, roughly in the position of uh, spacings of 15 millimeters but uh, you know when I'm actually coiling it round for the first time you just want to try and get it in that ballpark because once you've got it wound you can then go on and separate the uh, coils to get them really bang on and I've also got a little bit of gaffer's tape round here the masking tape wasn't strong enough just to pull that circumference in a little bit because the circumference of this is actually 35 millimeters and the wire that I'm going to wrap around it will actually uh, stretch out a little bit when we remove it so the actual circumference of the uh, the first coil down here will be uh, 38 millimeters which is uh, around about bang on for 2.4 gigahertz when you pull that circumference out it's around 121 millimeters so that's what we're going to do and also with this uh, mold as well it has a hole at the top so I can put my wire in there and I can get some pliers and hold it in place and then I can wrap all this wire around and when I want to remove it I can just trim that little bit off at the top there so I'm going to start bending my wire around my cone so I've put a little right angle bend in the start here so I can pop that through the hole in the top of the cone now this wire is already uh, bent in this direction so I'm going to do a uh, right hand circular polarised uh, cone for this one but uh, if you wanted a left hand one you can straighten this wire out and bend it around that way and then you'd have a left hand polarised one so for this video though this is going to be a right hand polarised one so to start it off then I've got my pliers and I'm gripping it at the top here so it can't spin around and now I'm going to start slowly bending it around the cone itself Just taking your time, try and get it nice and tidy as you possibly can. Nice tight coils all around that cone. And what you want to do when you're bending it is try and get it in the position of the uh, little marks that you've made with this masking tape here. As I said it doesn't have to be precise because at the end we can manipulate these coils just to tidy them up a little bit but try and get them in that area. just keep working your way around until you get to the end so I've got to the end and what I've actually done I've cut away the excess wire but I've left myself a good length on there because what I'm going to be doing when I've got it all nicely spaced out is putting a right angle bend on there so this wire actually comes back to connect to the feed points at the center of the cone so just make sure you leave yourself plenty of excess at the end so what I'm going to do now is just take my time and start pinching these coils and manipulating them so they're all nice and evenly spaced out 15 millimeters apart from each other and also pay attention to get the uh, actual angle of the coils correct so they're all nice and uniform so that's the coils prepared I've cut away the waste here at the top and uh, I've straightened this leg out here because what I'm going to do is bend that in on itself so we can solder our main driven element to this but uh, because this is galvanized steel wire I'm just going to clean it up with some emery paper so we can actually solder onto it 
So now that we've wound the coils, I'm going to move on to the uh, reflector for this antenna. Now, what I've done, I've got some uh, single sided PCB board and I've got one of these hole saws. Now this is uh, 50 millimeters in diameter and I've used that to cut out these round reflectors. Now, because this has a drill in the center to guide it, it's uh, cut out a hole in the center here. But what I've got are these uh, panel mount SMA connectors here and what you can do is actually solder those in place so the pin actually comes out underneath so we can actually solder our uh, coils onto that for our main driven element and uh, it's because it's soldered in place it's held on there nice and strong these are some ones I've previously done and they're actually painted black because I've uh, recycled these from other prototypes now as for the size of the reflector that's something you can actually experiment with if you wanted to you can actually make it slightly bigger but uh, in this video instead of using one of these panel mount connectors what I'm actually going to do is get some of this semi-rigid coax this is a short piece that I've already uh, soldered on an SMA connector to and I'm going to attach that to the back reflector and have it coming up and through so I can solder the uh, main driven element onto there but what I'm going to do I'm going to cut back some of this uh, outer braid here and fan it out onto the uh, copper clad board and hopefully if I can flow some solder in there it'll have a nice strong connection and uh, I'll probably back that up as well with some uh, epoxy just to make it even stronger so I've prepared the coax here as you can see I've just flared out the sides of it here so we can actually solder that directly to the flat surface on the reflector and I've got it held on this uh, scrap piece of wood and I've drilled a hole in the wood there itself so I can actually fit this part of the coax through there so then what I can do is actually get in there with the soldering iron and flow solder around there and we should have a good strong joint with the uh, outer braid of the coax and uh, then what I'll do I'll flood some epoxy in there as well just to make sure we've got a really strong connection there so this has worked out rather well so what I'm going to do is uh, let that cool down clean it up a little bit and then put some epoxy around there as well and we should have a uh, really strong joint there so I've got the semi-rigid coax attached to the reflector now and I used epoxy putty just to add some strength to it so it's in there it's quite strong now so I think that'll uh, hold it well and uh, another thing by using this uh, semi-rigid coax I don't have to worry about actually mounting it on a tripod or anything because this should be strong enough to actually hold it rigid while uh, it's in operation. So I've trimmed away any excess wire here and I've also straightened it out and I've bent it in on itself as you can see to meet in the centre of this cone here because I'm going to be soldering it directly to the uh, centre connector of this coax and I'm also going to use a little bit of epoxy just to add a little bit of strength and uh, hold it in place. But uh, what I'm going to have to do, because I'm going to have to get the impedance down to 50 ohms, I'm going to be also adding a uh, ballon here, which will be a triangle shaped piece of tin, just to uh, bring that uh, transmission line down to 50 ohms, because just like all helical antennas, you need to add a ballon for it to work correctly. So I've got my little shim cut out of some old tin, uh, just basically an old cookie tin or a baked bean tin, as long as it's flat, and uh, clean it up. And this measures... 15 millimeters which is the length of this wire here by 10 millimeters and I'm going to solder it in position like so and that will bring the impedance matching down to 50 ohms for the transmission line of the coax for uh, Wi-Fi or FPV. Now some of the cheaper Chinese versions of helical antennas don't have this uh, little metal ballon here what they have is just this straight piece of wire and what they say seem to be saying is that that straight piece there is enough to bring the impedance matching down to 50 ohms now in none of my books that i've got i've 
haven't found a reference to using this as a way to actually bring that uh, impedance matching down now if anybody knows any different then please let us know especially if there's any uh, ham radio enthusiasts out there who watch my channel if you've ever heard of uh, bringing that impedance down on a hel helical antenna just having a straight piece of wire for instance i've uh, actually never heard of it and i can't find a reference to it at all so I've got the little metal shim soldered in place there, ready to attach to the uh, centre connector of this coax. But uh, what I'm going to do now is prepare this uh, pen that I've got. I'm using the body of this to add a little bit of strength to run up the uh, centre of the cone here. So I'm going to remove all the innards and I'm going to saw off this part here so it's nice and flat so we can actually put that up onto our uh, reflector and epoxy it in place. But uh, I'm going to leave the uh, top part of the pen in place because that actually fits inside the cone and it wraps around that top coil quite nicely. And uh, what I can do is add some epoxy putty in there just to uh, make it a really strong joint. Now something else that I've started to do with helicals as well, I had it suggested to me that instead of just cutting off the uh, centre connector here and having a short stubby piece to solder onto, what I'm actually doing is I've bent it over like that and I'll solder it in place just like that is there and what will that will do it gives you a much greater surface area to solder onto so you get a uh, much stronger joint even though I'm going to epoxy this part of the uh, element in place just uh, that alone also adds uh, a little bit more strength to it as well so you don't get uh, any failures or it won't fail quite as easily you have to give it a quite a uh, yank to pull that solder joint apart when it's done like that so i've got the coil soldered in place there now so what i'm going to do is epoxy this center strengthening rod in place and you can see now that this uh, notch that I've cut out makes it uh, all nice and flush and I'm also going to put a little bit of epoxy in between the uh, metal shim ballon here and the uh, reflector itself just to add a little bit more strength. And to finish it off, I've just used epoxy putty around that first coil. And to get it really smooth, what you want to do is get some isopropanol alcohol and just uh, rub it onto the epoxy putty and get something like this pen. And you can just rub it in between that coil and you'll get a really nice smooth finish then with the epoxy putty. And to finish it all off, I'm going to give it a coat of acrylic paint. So here is the finished antenna with its paint on and I do prefer this uh, semi-rigid coax here to actually uh, connect it up to the alpha card and uh, mount it as well. It does away with uh, having to come up with something to mount it like a tripod. So, uh, you know, I, I do prefer the semi-rigid coax over one of these uh, bulkhead connectors. So what we'll do then, we'll give it a test on the uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Remember that uh, although I've uh, done the measurements, for 2.4 gigahertz because this is such a wide band antenna you could easily use this for 5.8 gigahertz fpv or 5 gigahertz wi-fi no problem at all so i've got this little test set up so you can uh, judge the performance of the cone helical for yourselves now unfortunately i uh, haven't got another helical antenna to actually uh, test it against now i have got a three turn helical antenna but that wouldn't really be a fair test so what I've got here is a Yagi uh, turbo antenna at the side which uh, is quite an expensive antenna with uh, you know it, uh, it's supposed to be a really good performer but I've done videos previously to show that uh, that's not quite correct although it is a uh, decent antenna it's just not worth the money that uh, the sellers ask for it so just uh, as a comparison between the two it'll give you uh, an idea how well the uh, helical cone antenna actually performs so I'm going to do a quick scan then so we can compare the two and uh, one more thing to note it is actually raining today so that will also affect Wi-Fi signals to some extent so doing a scan on both now turbo has picked up 14 access points and the helical cone has picked up 29 access points so you can see there it's uh, it's not bad when you compare it against the turbo tenor yagi 
So I'll just let them both settle down a little bit. So I think that's as good as what we're going to get from the uh, Yagi today, especially in the rain. But uh, look at the uh, helical cone antenna. It's a nice little performer. So I hope you found that video interesting. This really is a strong little performer and I can't find a single video here on YouTube that uh, goes into detail about the uh, helical cone antenna. And I am going to experiment with this design more in the future, especially, uh, you know, the, the space between the uh, coils themselves and uh, play around with having them slightly closer together here at the top and then tapering off further apart at the bottom. But uh, I'll link a couple of papers into the description below. They are heavy reading and quite mathematical, but uh, they are interesting nonetheless. And as I say, so many people do their uh, dissertations on this antenna because there's so many variations of it. And there is even a version of this antenna that uh, is more omnidirectional than directional. So I will uh, be taking a look at that in a future video because uh, that uh, has a lot of gain. So it may be beneficial, especially if you uh, like to fly FPV at long distance. So I will uh, try and uh, get that video made as soon as possible, but I've still got to do some prototypes first. So I hope you have a go at actually making this antenna. It's a lot easier to make than what you might think, especially if you purchase the cream horn moulds from eBay. It just makes it a lot easier. And uh, when you uh, take in the fact that it is quite a wide band antenna, it's not dual band. That's something different altogether, as I explained. But uh, because it's so wide band, if you do make a few mistakes, with the uh, measurements with your coils, it's not really going to impact that much on the antenna itself because it's so wide band, chances are you're not gonna really affect it for the band that you actually want. So expect to see a few more videos in the future around this uh, particular antenna. I do actually like it, it's got a lot of potential and uh, I will do some long range tests of this antenna in the future, comparing it to uh, normal helical antennas for instance. So as I say, I hope you enjoyed the video. Any comments, questions, drop them below and I will do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me for the next one.